Good news. Good news. How about the good news of letting the light of heaven shine on me? I felt that. You know, you can feel the light of heaven even when you're inside. You have a stone roof over your head with slate tiles. Are you moved listening to the carol on, listening to the prelude, listening to the opening hymn? Does the light of heaven shine on you? Do you get that bit of good news? I hope you do. Let us pray. God, we thank you for good news. Your scripture fulfilled messages, liberating messages in our hearts and minds. Your light, heavenly light upon us, wherever we are, whatever circumstance, whatever time of day. And we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Mama, you don't understand. It's all a matter of ideas, and God is just one idea I don't accept. It's not important. I don't believe in God. I don't even think about it. I get tired of him getting all the credit for all the things the human race achieves through its own stubborn effort. There simply is no blasted God. There is only man, and it is he who makes miracles. And if you know a raisin in the sun, if you know Ansberry's play, you know what happens next. Mama rises slowly from her chair, steps to her daughter, and slaps her face hard. Now you say after me, in my mother's house there is still God, greeted with silence. Now you say after me, in my mother's house, there is still God. So here are the people of Israel gathered at the water gate in 1972 that would have had a very particular meeting, meaning but that is not for today. Ezra reads to them from the Law of Moses, the first five books of the Old Testament. He reads to them from early morning until noon. Don't even think about turning that computer on or going to see a show or shopping or sleeping late or whatever your routine is today in this house. Ezra says, there is still God. And don't be confused by that sentence, so they read from the law of God with interpretation so that the people understood the reading. Interpretation here means translation from the Hebrew of the text to the Aramaic some of the people spoke and understood. This translation and interpretation has to do with the fact that there were mixed marriages among some of the people. Some of the men married women who were from other lands, other peoples, and they bore mixed race children. And that was not good. In an earlier gathering at the water gate in the 10th chapter of the book of Ezra, he preached about purity. And the men were told according to the law in no uncertain terms to send their foreign wives away. And those mixed race children with them, God wasn't having it. 
So the law said, that explains the tears, the people weeping in the text. Can you imagine the wrenching that would cause in households today? I don't know many families where there isn't some mixing, some mixed race children, foreign marriages. I want you to think about that. We have to challenge what men say from what God says in creation. What we read isn't always what we know God wants, God desires. It's what men want. Men today use the Bible to preach against skin color, same-sex relations, gender and non-binary self-knowing against undesirable immigrants from shithole countries as Trump called them. He was talking about Haiti and African countries, but I'm sure he would gladly extend that to Central America as well. Well, Ezra just read the law for three or four or five or six hours, depending on what is meant by early morning. Every now and then you'll hear about an actor who will present the Book of Mark, let us say, for entertainment, a one-actor dramatic show. But this? Try to imagine it. Pastor Deborah Northern will be reading the books of Genesis and Exodus next Saturday morning at 6 a.m. Come after breakfast, but don't worry about lunch. The African Fellowship and the Men's Club will be grilling in the garth. It's not getting much use these days. It'll be a kind of Pentateuch tailgate party with ribs and root beer, and maybe a little bourbon too. And next month, Reverends Lamb and Meisenheimer will be reading Leviticus and Deuteronomy and Numbers. And Beloved Earth will be making vegetarian lasagna salad with spring greens and walnuts, tangerine slices and cranberry lemonade. They built a platform, a tower, so that Ezra could be lifted up, something like what we've done here at Riverside. The urgency and the solemnity make sense. The book of Nehemiah is after the destruction of Jerusalem, which ends the book of Chronicles. And chapter 8 of our text comes after the walls around the city have come tumbling down and then been rebuilt. They believe that by hearing and embracing their law, their sacred texts, they could rebuild their lives, their society, their way of life, destroyed as much by their own negligence and sin, in this case, taking foreign wives and having mixed-race children, as by the invading armies of a foreign power. And that's us. The American empire won't fall because Russia or China gains the upper hand. Our doom will come because Kentucky keeps electing Mitch Connell. Because Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema aren't really Democrats. Because not only did Donald Trump get elected the first time, but 74 million people voted for him again. Seeing, knowing, hearing who he is. Our empire will fall because he appears to be a viable presidential candidate again. Our empire will fall because too many of us will not accept the truth of our history. And too many of us still don't believe we all come from the same God.
God that the same light of heaven shines on all of us. America needs its face slapped. God does not appear to exist in this house. We are not a Christian nation. We don't need to be. We could just be civilized. That would be enough for me. We could just treat each other as if we all belonged to the same family. Well, all the adults were present, and paying attention. And Ezra says, this day is holy to your God, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's not worry about what we've come through. The long night of exile is over. Let's begin again to treasure this life that God has given us. There is still God. Ezra is telling them, obedient to our law, gathered in community, God in our midst, anything is possible for us. I hear Arrhenius, the glory of God is human beings fully alive. One day the world may put this pandemic behind us and we will be able to take Ezra's advice, do not mourn or weep, go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions to those who have nothing for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. One day black lives will matter. We will be able to take Ezra's advice, do not mourn or weep. We have to do as the 70s revolutionary Asada Shakur said, we must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. One day we'll break the hold of the rich, oil-rich members of the Plastics Industry Association on legislation and start using paper bags for groceries and get rid of single-use plastic bottles and save the ocean and sow the planet from destruction and the earth will be able to breathe again. I'd go. I'd go if there was a call for a public reading of bell hooks, all great movements for social justice in our society have strongly emphasized a love ethic that presupposes that everyone has the right to be free, to live fully and well. I'd go to hear James Baldwin. I use the word love here, not merely in the personal sense, but as a state of being, a state of grace, not in the infantile American sense of being happy, but in the tough and universal sense of quest and daring and growth. I'd go to hear Toni Morrison. This is baby Suggs speaking to former enslaved people in Beloved. Here, in this place, we flesh, flesh that weeps, laughs, flesh that dances on bare feet in grass. Love it, love it hard. Yonder they do not love your flesh. Don't you wish we could have all been there to hear Lincoln, his voice, at the second inaugural address with malice toward none, 
with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. He'd be so disappointed in us. The malice is still seething, grace unwelcomed. The work isn't nearly finished. Charity is most of what there is, not justice. The wounds are covered, but not treated. Peace is personal, localized, episodic. For the nation and the world Lincoln envisioned, the nation talked about in the Declaration of Independence, but never fully intended for all. For peace is unrealized aspirational among those who see as God sees, who hope with God's heart. We can all listen again and should to Amanda Gorman's The Hill We Climb. While democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith, we trust. For while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. You heard a little um, Lin-Manuel Miranda in that, didn't you? So while once we asked how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe, now we assert how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us. We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be. So here's Jesus fresh from his baptism and his wilderness wandering, dove and devil behind him. He does a few trial sermons in Galilee and then goes home to Nazareth. And you know what he does? He reads to them from the poetry of Isaiah. He uses it like a mission statement to say, this is who I am. This is what I am about. I'm here to bring the poor good news, to release the captives and help the blind to see, to let the oppressed go free. And after reading from the text in Luke's gospel, the first word Jesus speaks at the beginning of his public ministry is today. God's reign is here and now. There is nothing to wait for. The time is now, today. The president says, get vaccinated and don't go to work at a big company that could become a super spreader. And the Supreme Court says, do as you please. He's not in charge. We are. The right is today. We're still expressing condolences after horrific mass shootings and changing nothing about the laws that grant easy access to assault weapons fit for battlefields, huge profits for gun manufacturers today. A man with a History of mental illness pushes a woman from a subway platform to her death on the track. She is Michelle Goh, a wonderful human being. Have you read about her, learned about her? An Asian American from San Francisco living here in our city among us, a 
foreigner in the minds of some, insufficient attention to our ongoing mental health crisis, all of that. One day, people of color, too many of them poor, will be able to do as Ezra says, don't mourn or weep, eat the fat and drink sweet wine. This day is holy to your God, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know most days I believe that. April 4th is coming again. Right there, 1967, Dr. King preached here against the Vietnam War and so much more. And he said, today, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. The earth matters. Voting rights matter. You matter. Today. I want to go back to a raisin in the sun. The money is gone. Oh, Walter Lee Jr., what have you done? But Lena, his wife, is ready. I'll work, she says. I'll work 20 hours a day in all the kitchens in Chicago. I'll strap my baby on my back if I have to and scrub all the floors in America and wash all the sheets in America if I have to, but we got to move. We got to get out of here. That's the fierce urgency of now, and that's what we have to do, move. Get out of this situation we're in today. What's your mission statement? What are you and I, Riverside, about today? Our Mission and Social Justice Commission had a retreat yesterday as fine a Saturday morning and early afternoon as any I've spent at Riverside. The priorities for understanding the work to be done were summarized at the end as profound inequality preserving our democracy and the climate crisis. Or as I listened to their work together, earth, equality, democracy. What an agenda for a church wanting to build upon its progressive history in these early years of the 21st century. These are areas of mission. Our commission is telling us that we can all take part in, in small and large ways. I wish it were enough to read and hear our sacred text and to say and mean as Jesus did today. This scripture has been fulfilled. We have a world to shower blessings upon with love and good works. As Paul urges in Romans, as Lena is fired up to do, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Today, what are we waiting for? Amen.